In today's South Island road trip video, we'll be traveling between Lake Tekapo and Queenstown. I'll go through the route on a Google South Island map and point out those interesting spots you really want to know about when traveling New Zealand. So let's get started. There's lots to discover. So we're looking at the South Island Google map, uh, Lake Tekapo to Queenstown. This is State Highway 8. Google states that the distance is two. 156 kilometers and takes three hours 13 minutes so that's the first point i want to raise with google maps in new zealand you always need to add 10 to 15 percent on time because they're not quite right so as a first reference point i want to look at these lakes here we have lake tekapo we have lake pukaiki and when you're traveling further south there's a number of other lakes which are part of a power water power system so when you're traveling out of lake tekapo you have um, the airport on the left hand side um, you can actually do uh, scenic flights here's the airport uh, scenic flights into the mountains mount cook area either fixed wing or helicopter flights so that's one first point you want to be aware of then when you're traveling further south not only can you see here the channels these are water channels which connect the different huge lakes for the water uh, power system. But also, there's a really interesting spot here. It's hard. It's very easy to miss. It's uh, Irishman Creek Station. This is the place where Bill Hamilton uh, in the 1950s established uh, or invented actually the jet boat. So this little uh, cottage right on the on the on the roadside actually is the place or the start, the entrance point for Irishman Creek Station. Again, that's where the New Zealand jet boat was invented. So here's another map showcasing actually the Southern Alps. They're running uh, the whole island, the whole South Island. And uh, we have the highest peak of New Zealand, the Mount uh, Auraki, Mount Cook, and the Mount Cook National Park here. But there's one spot I really want to to be aware of. It's the Lake Pukaki viewpoint. This is a magic place, especially on a fine day. Look at these pictures here. You can actually stop right at the car park here and you see New Zealand's highest mountains. We have Mount Cook here, um, 3,753 meters and Mount Tasman right beside. In front of it, you have Lake Pukaki. It's a beautiful lake. It's uh, obviously that turquoise um, color of the water which comes uh, through the glacier sediment. And here's a local lodge, Lakeside Lodge. It's a beautiful spot to stay if you prefer a little bit of a remoter experience, uh, not staying in Tekapo, but a little bit outside. So that's a great spot. But here you come to a um, a little shop, a salmon shop, which is called Mount Cook Alpine Salmon Shop. This is quite a, a cool place if you want to purchase some uh, local salmon. The salmon are actually raised here in those water channels in between um, the lakes. So we'll have a look at one of those uh, in a couple of minutes on this. Here you can see these uh, smoked salmon or packed salmon, whatever. So it's a great spot to get some uh, fresh fish on the way. Now, once you leave that shop, you actually pass the um, road towards Mount Cook National Park, this SH-80. It's about an hour's drive from this corner up to Mount Cook Village, and you have a number of hikes and uh, activities in there. I don't want to go into that, but if you have a lot of time that day, you can make it in there and out again, but be, please be aware it's about an hour's time. It's worthwhile doing, especially if it's a super nice day. Um, there's one property I want to highlight. It's one of my favorite spots. It's Mount Cook um, Retreat. Um, it's a accommodation property, uh, which is located right here on the on the lake. So Mount Cook Lakeside Retreat, here it is. It's a stunning place. So let's continue further south. Uh, we're passing Twizel. It's a village which was uh, um, established when they built the, uh, 
the water channels in between the lakes in the 1960s. Now, a cool little spot here is if you're into flying, this is a Red Cat biplane flight. So on a beautiful day, this is obviously something you might want to consider flying with a biplane, with an old style plane into the mountains. It's obviously a very unique experience. So if you continue further south, you actually have on the left hand side a working high country salmon farm. So this is a spot where you can park your car, you can walk through there, you can purchase obviously um, salmon as well, packed salmon, but it's a great experience to um, to understand a little bit more how how they uh, farm the salmons in this area. Again, you know, they're using those channels and uh, people can actually catch their own fish. So <laughs> that's another way of, uh, of entertainment, especially for children. Um, they have a cafe there as well. So that's good to know. So the next major village you come through is called Marama. So in the Marama, you have a few interesting things really to, to check out. Um, they have the hot tubs, though, though they obviously have some hot springs in the area, which is quite, um, quite common in, in the South Island because of the tectonic plates. So let's have a quick look at those. Um, you can stop there. They're very close to the main road. And uh, especially, you know, if you feel a little bit weary after lots of hiking, there is also a, um, a wool place, a um, shop where they, they used to do live sessions, but I understand they don't do it any longer. Uh, it's called the Weekly Rams. There's a coffee with it. Uh, this is what the place looks like. Um, it's quite rustic, um, so it's worthwhile stopping here as well. The other thing um, Omarama is really famous for is hang gliding. Uh, they used to have even world championships here. So there are options to uh, book a hang gliding trip with the local uh, companies. So keep that in mind. If it's about 10 kilometers outside Omarama on your way towards Queenstown, you have these clay cliffs here. Um, this is um, another cool area you can go into. Um, it's uh, free of charge. There's a car park there and you can walk through these um, limestone structures which are formed millions of years ago. As you can see, the, the region is fairly barren. It's, uh, it's hardly any trees there. The reason for that is obviously quite a high kind of um, plateau. It's about 750, 800 meters high here. And uh, yeah, it will change when you go into other parts of the South Island. So we continue towards Lindy's Pass and here we have um, a high country sheep station. So one thing I want to mention here, the whole area, the Mackenzie and Central Targo region is, um, is famous for merino, for wool production, for um, clothing. Now we're passing over from the Canterbury region on the right hand side to the Otago region over Lindy's Pass. Lindy's Pass is one of the main passes is around about seven, 970 meters high. As you can see in the in the winter season, there can be snow. The road can be closed, you know, occasionally in the winter. Uh, but in the summer season, you don't have any any problems, really. It's a stunning area. It's um, um, tussock grassland and um, it's, yeah, it's very picturesque. And yeah, heading down from Lindy's Pass, this road uh, is I wouldn't say steep, but it's obviously going downhill all the way. So you need to be mindful of that. There's a couple of corners you want to slow down a little bit. And then you come to a little village called, not a village even, it's a spot called Terrace. And in Terrace, you have a, a little cafe. Um, it's actually, look at here. It's, let's have a look if they have some pictures. Yes, we do have some pictures here. Um, terrace, it's a little cafe, it's also a merino wool shop, so I highly encourage you to stop there, have a cuppa, as well as a pop in the store, they have beautiful socks and they have beautiful petrol station as well, but uh, yeah, it's a number of things you can purchase, um, and also gives you that kind of country store feel, um, here's a selection of whatever they have in this shop, so yeah, I'll encourage to stop here. After Terrace, you can turn to the right here, which is going right to Wanaka. 
Um, that's an option, but let's continue further south towards uh, Queenstown. And the next place I really want to highlight is this Bedingo area. Bedingo is a, um, a famous um, sheep station, a uh, sheep station, a farm, basically is, is a huge property. Um, they, they're still raising uh, merino sheep, but there's a couple of things you really want to be aware of. There's a kind of a, a lot of history in this area. There is not only here a beautiful hike, um, the Kanuka Loop track. Let's have a quick look at that. So that's the kind of scenery you get here. It's still very barren and very rugged, and they have that just kind of uh, rocks in the area. But it's a beautiful area, rich in history. The history is about gold, gold mining, and you have one of these old cottages here built with just stone and mud. And uh, yeah, in the 1860s, 1880s, there was a huge gold rush in the area. So you can still experience those kind of old remains of the buildings. So highly recommend to stop. But there's another place not far away from this. I, I really think this is very special and it's a stamper battery. So in those days, they, uh, they used to get the gold out of uh, the rocks either as nuggets or in the quartz. So what they did here with these stamper batteries, they were crushing basically the rocks. Um, hopefully I can, yeah, it's a better picture here. They're crushing the rocks. Uh, they were using um, often water, uh, water channels to uh, to produce the uh, the energy the, <laughs> to, to get these huge stamper batteries uh, going. Here we have also um, an old mining shaft. So they would actually take the rock out of those mining shafts and would crush the rock and then filter out the gold pieces. Um, and yeah, it, it was highly lucrative in those days. Um, big gold rush. Yeah, 1816, 1880s in Central Otago. So there's a lot of information about it here as well when you when you pop there and then stop so you can familiarize yourself with the uh, an amazing history in Central Otago. You will be traveling now along Lake Dunstan. Lake Dunstan is basically the flooded uh, Clutha River Valley um, here on the uh, on the left hand side. When I came to New Zealand in the uh, mid 1980s, they started to flood this and they built a huge dam further along down down the Clutha River. And yeah, this is basically again for power generation further down uh, towards Clyde, Alexandra. But there's another few point here, Quartz Reef Point. You want to maybe stop and um, get an overview on this really interesting rugged area. And that rugged area in these days is very famous for wine. They so there are a number of vineyards in the area. One of them you can actually taste that is the Cloudy Bay Shed. There's some beautiful pictures here I discovered. And um, yeah, it's um, it's a lovely setting. I mean, as you can see, it's very stylish from uh, where you came over Lindy's past. There's a number of vineyards, um, uh, Mount Difficulty, and there's, 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 there's quite a few. I mean, I can't name them all, but you will, you will pass them. They, some of them have lunch. You can actually have lunch platters um, and wine tastings, of course. So um, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a great spot um, to stop before you head further down to Queenstown. So on the southern end of uh, Lake Dunstan, you have the, uh, the village of Cromwell. It's grown quite a bit. It's probably the, the largest um, um, township in the area. Um, lots of history again, but there's one point or a couple of points I want to point out. It's um, Here's an historic predict you want to maybe stop by. There's a, a lot of old buildings um, together, like it, like in the old days, you get a bit of a feel like it used to be. Um, so that's a very cool place. There are cafes, there are little shops. The other interesting part here in, um, in Cromwell region is uh, orchards. There's a lot of them around here. One of them is Jackson's Orchard, just to showcase it. Mainly stone fruit, 
So they have cherries, they have apricots, they have um, peaches, etc. And what you can do, you can actually buy dried fruit here in these shops along. But it doesn't stop with history and uh, local orchards. There's also the Highlands experience where you can actually not only go on these scooters, but you can also um, race a Porsche. It's a, it's a race course. Um, it's been established about maybe 10 years ago. So if um, you can, you know, go on a Ferrari, go around with, uh, with a co-driver. And uh, yeah, it's, it's totally different to what you've seen before during the day. So maybe worthwhile. Um, if you're into wines and you still have a little bit of time on your side, you want to head over to Bannockburn. Uh, Bannockburn are some of the most famous vineyards here in the uh, central Otago region. One of them is Mount Difficulty, Carrick Winery, which is offering beautiful lunches, um, Mount Difficulty also lunches, but uh, Akaroa, stunning views over the over the Cromwell area, uh, the, the orchards and the wineries. Now we're heading into the Kavarau Gorge. This is now a narrow road heading into Queenstown. There's a couple of places you might be interested to stop. Again, you know, it's a gold mining center, uh, which is on the other side. It's connected with a bridge. There's a car park right on the main road. Um, beautiful again, you know, you see this Kavarau uh, uh, River, which is famous also uh, for uh, whitewater rafting. Like, and then you continue along the Kavarau River, stunning, stunning road. Um, there's one place I always liked, <laughs> really, I like to stop is the Roaring Meg Power Station. This is right on the corner. It not only offers you, obviously, um, a look at the small little power station, but it actually is a classic spot to stop and take some pictures and just breathe in that beautiful atmosphere. There's a bit of information as well. Now further heading into Queenstown, we're already getting into some of the um, adventure activities Queenstown is famous for. Here we have Nevis Bungee, um, very famous. You can book that. Um, it's, a, it's a few hours trip. You can book it and with transfers from, from Queenstown, but that's just one of the bungee options. I just want to point out quickly. But yeah, there, there's a few of them. So if you're traveling along, you can do that when you base yourself either in Cromwell or in Queenstown. You can do all these activities. Also, the original Kavarau suspension bridge, which um, Bungie basically started uh, in the 1988, I believe it was. So this is the uh, suspension bridge over the Kavarau River again. And this is where people jump down. I've personally never done it myself, but <laughs> I'm scared of height. But this is obviously a classic place. You can stop there. You can people jumping there. There's also a cafe and a shop. Uh, it's quite sophisticated. Um, yeah, just forgotten on the other side of um, the, the road is uh, the Gibson Valley Winery and Cheese Place. So again, yet again, another place you can stop. Uh, for food. They have also one of the very few wine cellars in New Zealand. So uh, you can do a guided tour there. Look at that. How beautiful is that? So again, they're offering lunches, they're offering tastings, uh, cheese, wine. It's all here. So you will feel once you pass the cover up bridge, you will, you will got into the Lake Hayes area, Aeroton area, you will feel that uh, the traffic will be more. Uh, Queenstown is quite a major hub and therefore the traffic into Queenstown is quite substantial. You have two ways of going into Queenstown. You can either go the direct route, you will pass the airport. There's always quite a bit of traffic jam around that. And then just along White Lake Wakatip into central Queenstown, that's one way. Or you can actually go through the uh, historic village of Aerotown. Uh, again, lots of gold mining, beautiful little place. I'll just show you a couple of pictures now. You can also stay in Aerotown if you prefer a little bit, um, a bit more peace and quiet. Aerotown would be my choice. Um, it's uh, only about 10, 15 minutes drive from, uh, from Queenstown.
but you can also there's another couple of lodges here in the um, in the Gibson Valley area. You can actually stay overnight. Uh, there's some vineyard cottages. There's some uh, more exclusive lodges and bed and breakfast. So if you go through Aerotown, you will traveling around, around here, passing some of the famous golf courses, and you go through uh, Arthur's Point. Arthur's Point is where the they do the jet boating. So they do the shot over jet will actually start here. They usually pick you up in, in Queenstown, but you can drive yourself there and you can actually start right from there. But they also do uh, the white water rafting, uh, which is actually finishing here. This is the shot over river. It's a grade five um, white water river. So Cavarau is about grade three, grade four. Uh, the shot over is really an amazing river to do the, um, the white water rafting in the Queenstown area. So yeah, and that brings us to the end of this video trip um, from Lake Chekapo to Queenstown. Um, you're going through the George Road into central Queenstown. I mean, Queenstown is, as I mentioned before, the adventure capital of New Zealand, and there's heaps to do. There's the, the gondola, and this would actually really require a, another video on its own. But hope you enjoyed the, um, the session, um, and you find this video helpful. Please subscribe to more um, videos we make on that topic on New Zealand, and looking forward to seeing you again in the next video. See you there.